and so I'm actually, uh, so th that those are my feelings. Um, and I'm, I'm curious for you, because I kind of left that space completely. I no longer work uh, at, work with the church as much. And so I feel a lot freer with that. And so for you, you've built such an extraordinary space with Advent Next itself. Yeah. Um, the idea of being able, a, a cool, fun, creative way to talk about theology and talk about clergy and talk about the organization, all the very different topics that you cover. For you, how has that, like, do you feel like you've reached that fulfillment? Um, or do you feel like that you, what, what, is it everything that you thought it would be three years ago, four years ago, when you decided like, man, I'm gonna okay. do this and create this space. Do you feel like it's been everything you expected to be? Or do you still have some like, man, I actually have these goals and I have this bigger vision to create more space. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm curious. I love how you've turned this into an interview with me. This is well, great. I think I think <laughs> no, I, I, and I'm not trying to do that. I just think the most interesting, um, you know, conversations are conversations, not just like you right. interviewing me and me just talking about myself because I could do that too. You know that. No. Kid, but <laughs> this is good. This is good, yeah. and I appreciate you asking that because I think that you know the original goal of this was like, oh, let's let's create, let's create a TED Talk space because oftentimes you know, some of the biggest front people in Adventism are not scholars. <laughs> uh, they're, they're people who are lay Bible people and they read it as it is. And there's a place for that, but there's also a place for nuance and an increase, I don't know, like just a larger database of knowledge that helps us to add a little more, it was just flavor, nuance, subtlety, um, aha moments that we can have with scripture. And I wanted to create that space, but because of budget, you know, we can't do the whole stage production of, you know, Advent Next and red letters in the back, like a Ted talk could. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a, a podcast would suffice. But I think for me, you know, what I'm learning is like, okay, this was a podcast and it's, and it is, and it's doing well in that medium on, you know, Spotify and, Apple podcast, but I've also just kind of filmed it and put it on YouTube, but it's not really long form podcast other than Joe Rogan's podcast. <laughs> um, long form content isn't for YouTube, right? So despite itself, it's gotten followers, um, but I would like to create shorter form content where you're having people ask questions. Uh, and getting answers to those questions. Like I'm taking a class right now on Jewish life and thought, and I really love it. It's by, by a guy, uh, Dr. Dukan. Uh, he's Jewish and became Adventist. And he has so much insight into J Jewish tradition and what that means in light of the Sabbath, of the Day of Atonement, of uh, did people in the New Testament uh, drink wine even like, and looking at like, well, actually this is the word and these are the religious practices. And in this type of ceremony, this is the tradition of what would be used. Like there's just so much insight there that somebody who's just kind of stumbling into the scriptures wouldn't have, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I, I want to be able to share more of that, but I know that Advent Next is its own entity. Like it's, I want it to be a resource for people. I want it to be a conversation starter. I want it to be a place where people get fed and they learned and they learn from the best. Um, but there's also a place where I feel a growing sense of, I have a unique perspective and something that I want to share. And I don't know if this is necessarily the space to do that. And so I'm, you know, developing my own space and my own podcast. But one thing I do wonder about Advent Next as its own entity is how will it continue to adjust as uh, short form media really becomes the, 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 the point of growth, right? So TikTok, um, YouTube shorts, like how do I continue to create a space where, um, you know, people will be interested in the long form, but able to create also short form content that can have some traction to it and also adapt to that space right? Because a TikTok video by the, the nature of the medium, TikTok, it's just a different, you have a different way of communicating. You have a different style of presenting information and time is a limitation. 
uh, resources are a limitation. And so I would like to see it to continue to adapt to, to be platform centric. So for YouTube, creating 12 minute videos that are answering questions that people are searching for TikTok, being one minute of entertainment that also gives you uh, some insight into things you haven't thought of before and really trying to make sure that every platform is being met in the way that it's supposed to be met. That's something I would love to see happen in the future. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, I'm, based off that, I'm curious, uh, and this is kind of like, we may have a, not necessarily, necessarily a disagreement, but I, you know, we, we've heard the saying that like, you know, the only like kind of way to be successful in any type of venture is to not try to cater to everyone, but find a niche. Right. And then like grow that niche. Yeah. I, I think that, you know, what you're doing, you have a niche, but you've been very successful. And I think that's why you've had a lot of great growth. You know, uh, there's, there's literally millions of podcasts out there, but uh, in, in this Adventist, Adventist space, especially you've, you've grown really well. I mean, you're, I think you're, I feel like you're one of the top Adventist podcasts out there. Uh, I, I, I believe so. I mean, we, we look at the numbers, but also kind of like the production value and all that good jazz. And so um, I wonder, cause a lot of times you, you have comp- even other media companies uh, like, you know, from big companies like the New York Times or this company or that company, you know, there have these niche and they'll be really successful in that space. But then they can look at all these other places that really cool things are happening and they can say like, oh, well, I guess obviously I need to be in that space as well. I think one of the tricky things is being able to discern the various different spaces and what growth means in those spaces and what that entails, because, you know, for a TikTok, for example, yeah. it's very clear that TikTok, um, yeah, there's a lot of growth in there as far as posting content, you get a lot of engagement, there's a lot of opportunity for growth and engagement on a TikTok, but that's also a completely different niche than podcasting, than journalism, than, you know, because on TikTok, it's all about short, entertaining, fascinating yeah. bits, bits, right? Um, and, you know, uh, now it, you can definitely do Christian content on there. Like right? there's several different successful Christian TikTokers, but uh, it'll be really challenging to, you know, have this niche of these in depth because your your niche I feel like is these in depth conversation about theology about Christianity, right? right. Um, that's how I feel about about your content. And so I'm curious as you think about you know doing content for a YouTube or a TikTok. Do, do you think that you have to almost completely change your identity as far as like the niche you're going after? Because that's a completely different uh, audience. Um, or do you really feel like you could take kind of the same type of package of Advent Next and be able to uh, make it work on a TikTok? Like what should be your strategy with that? I don't know if you want to get into yeah. that, but but you yeah. just it's, it's curious because I mean, I'm also, you know, exploring different things. So I'm curious about... What's, what's been your strategy in, in, your, in your thinking? You know, it's so funny to me because I've been watching way too much TikTok lately and just also just trying to get a feel of like the language style, right? Like I think every platform has its own language and to learn to be fluent in it so you don't come into that space very awkward and like clunky and not fitting. And so, you know, one thing like the Washington Post is a journalistic outlet, uh, but they have a TikTok. And the way that they deliver their news uh, is very TikTok-y, uh, very, very quippy, very entertaining, a little bit funny, um, but they are trying to hit just a couple headlines uh, or, or trying to uh, hone in on one specific issue and do it in one minute, right? Uh, through a little skit. And it's a creative form of communication. Of course, they have the budget, right, to be able to diversify. The same guy who's running the Washington Post is not also in front of the camera doing the TikTok. I hear what you're saying, too, because I don't want to be diluted. I don't want to dilute my time and not forcefully put it in the area that I am doing well in and continue to grow that out. There are people who have been doing TikToks for six months, and they're at 150,000 followers, right? 
mm-hmm. and I'm on YouTube and I have, you know, a 3.5 K, right? Like, mm-hmm. and I've been doing this for two and a half years. Mm-hmm. And so for me to, to say like, am I using my time wisely? Like, yes, I think my, my gift is to do long form conversations, sit down, let's have a cup of tea and let's talk. But is that what people want? And it, and maybe it is, but maybe I need to also adapt myself to find other people in different market spaces and letting them know that, hey, I'm having a cup of tea over here on Saturday mornings if you want to join. So I, I think that's kind of my thinking about it. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I don't know, man. I think, <laughs> I, I think this is just my opinion. And it's probably wrong because I'm very opinionated and oftentimes, you know, opinionated people don't, don't know what they're talking about, but I, I, I feel like that can be an yeah. unhealthy place to be, you know, comparing the two because yeah, each, like each niche, each market is, is different. Right. Um, you know, there are, uh, Firstly, YouTube, yeah, YouTube is different from TikTok, right? There are, you know, uh, YouTubers who are, are doing incredible things, but yeah, they have like 10, 15, maybe 50,000 subscribers, right? Uh, I mean, let's take, let's take a, you know, let's take a Justin Koo, for example, right? And this is this is kind of me trying to make a point. Justin, Justin Koo has done incredible things um, for for the church, for youth, young adults, he's baptized many people. So many people have been edified by his content and he has a hundred thousand subscribers, right? Mm -hmm. What if Justin Koo, you know, is on TikTok and says like, oh, this person has been doing this content for six months, like you said, and they have 150 K. I guess I must be doing something wrong. I might need to check, you know, I just feel like that's a dangerous space to be in comparing. And I used to do, I used to be really active on social media. So I used to do quite a bit of that. And I think that's why I'm speaking of that. I used to have a Facebook and YouTube page and I had over 40,000 people following um, me on Facebook. I would get like over a hundred thousand views on each one of my videos. Um, But instead of just like acknowledging and focus on like, man, like that God is doing something. There are people who engage with that, whether it's 100,000, 4,000, what have you, you know, I did get in that space sometimes when I'm looking at other people and what the the numbers they're hitting. And it does, it's a, it's a, I, I don't know if I want to call it a dangerous, dangerous place to be in because I don't want to be too dramatic, but it is kind of a posture that allows, I feel like the devil to kind of start sneaking in and start, you know, causing you to have some self-doubt, self-hatred, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because I bet you, like, if you were, if we were to make a, you know, a, a, a call and say like, hey, listen, those of you who are listening have been blessed by all the great work Kendra has been doing with Advent Next, you know, DM her, message her, you're, get, you're hearing incredible stories about how people listen to you um, and, 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 and blessed by your, by your engagement. Um, and those people who are on TikTok who have 100,000, um followers or views yeah they may be talking to and touching more people but i I just feel like when you use that as a metric for whether or not you're doing the right thing and and maybe i'm misinterpreting what you're saying if i am just call me out but i I, you know i feel like using that metric can be it can be pretty dangerous uh yeah and and i agree with you i absolutely agree with you and i think that it is a dangerous place to be in a comparison mode and i guess for me i I don't want to fall into the trap with, of what the church has fallen into, right? Which is like our biggest evangelism is still through TV, right? Or like that's or radio is still a big event. And I'm sure that's a, there's a place for that. But, um, you know, I think there is a danger of, of chasing a trend too hard, but also not falling behind the times, right? And yeah. I think every medium is reaching a different audience, right? Podcasters are going to talk. This is going to reach people who want long form content, who want, who have the time right now, people aren't commuting, right? They're working Mm -hmm. from home. So podcasts might not be uh, uh, as greatly consumed as it once was, right? Mm -hmm. People also, when they're on YouTube, they're not looking for stuff to watch for an hour. They're looking for 10 minutes while they uh, scarf down their sandwich or something Uh, Mm -hmm. for TikTok. They're just wanting a a, a little bit of entertainment and maybe a little bit of like, aha. And that's a completely different um, generation. That's generation Z, but also every generation's on TikTok right now. But like, Mm -hmm. and so 
I just want to make sure that I'm adapting uh, this space to be uh, palatable for like all different types of uh, mediums. Now, that's not to say that there's not like unwisdom in that. I don't know, that's not a word, but like, because I don't want to be so chasing a trend that I dilute other things that I could be doing in the space that I'm doing it well. So it's a balance, but I'm trying to find it. But what about you? Like, okay, I'm going to turn the table here sure. because, yeah. because parable media is an audio form. And mm-hmm. have you found that people are listening less to audio now that we aren't commuting and we are staying more indoors? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's interesting because I, th- so the audience that we're, I've, I've been, we've been really intentional and in, in, in focusing in on audiences. So one, there's two different main, main groups that we're, 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 we're trying to attract. One, you have millennial families, you know, these are people who are in their late twenties, mid thirties, who have small kids, who their kids are addicted to screens and they're, they're looking for edifying, entertaining content that uh, doesn't require them their kids staring at a screen, right? And so with a, the Parable app, your kids can listen to um, various different adventurous stories to engage them. You can use it for worship. You can use it for a bedtime story. So it, it can be used as a resource for that. And, and so uh, for and that space is screen-free entertainment, but we also kind of see it as a, a resource. This is a, a tool you can use for your home. And the other audience is youth and young adult resources. So we, we're looking at, and so what we try to do is not say like, okay, we are, our contemporary is, a TikTok or a YouTube or uh, the or Netflix or these entertainment platforms. No, 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 no. We're we're our tem- our contemporary. We're saying is like the Bible study or and the the the, the sermonettes and um the YouTube video sermons that that pastors, youth pastors, young adult pastors, and pastors use to create conversations. There's a Saturday uh, Sabbath school or Sunday school or the Bible studies, right? Um, what we're saying is that you know. What if instead of us using lectures and sermons and these resources that we know just don't don't work with youth and young adults, like they're just not engaging me like I'm, I'm a young adult. I'm in my starting to get into my later 20s, but um, and I'm a, I, and I have a background in theology, but I mean, to be honest with you, I listening to sermons and whatnot is just not as not as engaging was saying that like this can be a substitute for that dynamic um, audio drama with a plot with characters with different things going on and each one each one comes with a guide with guide with several questions for you to refer to and so the, the idea is that like that's the plane that we're playing on we're saying these are a lot more engaging dynamic resources for youth and young adults so that being the case, yeah. um you know we're releasing this podcast a few podcast shows whatnot but we we are not trying to get into the place of entertainment because I believe that uh, <laughs> and we talk about this when you once you once you start getting to the place of 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 wanting to be a Christian and wanting to be edifying but also want to compare yourself to entertainment you're gonna fail I believe you're gonna fail and that's kind of what I was getting at because you know you can't compete with you can't compete with Netflix you know we, we Pure Flix you know I'm not gonna Pure Flix is a great resource for a lot of families but you watch your content, clearly they can't compete with Netflix because Netflix, their main goal is to entertain, make you laugh, cry, angry, create characters that kind of get a reaction, entertain, take up time. Whereas Pure Flix, being having a Christian angle, their 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 main focus is not that. They can't do that because they're Christians. Because as Christians, we have to be stewards. We have to be edifying all that good jazz. And so the two don't go together. So I, I guess that's kind of my greater point that, yeah. hey, I'm not looking at TikTok. I'm not looking at what, what what the biggest accounts they're making people last when i'm i'm not focused on tiktok because while i think that there are christian tiktokers that are doing fun awesome stuff on that on that kind of our space is more uh uh, uh christian resources and so i'm not going to look so much at all these other platforms that focus too much on entertainment because i feel like that can yeah. be a tricky place to be and so um yeah, to answer your original question about concern about podcast listening, not as much because we're more than a, a, 
a just podcast production company. Right. Um, we're we're looking to be like a, a big resource for families, for pastors, etc. I love what you just said about sc- it's a screen free resource because I think anybody who's been stuck in this pandemic has been spending way too much time staring at their screen. Right, you're at work. And you are working from your screen, you are schooling from your screen, you are, and I just think, like you said, just to have a screen free time to also maybe exercise a different part of your brain, which I think listening brings out this amazing part of your imagination and just something that you don't get when you're stuck on the screen all day. So I think that that's, it's a great market, I think. And I think you're right. I think people and families and anybody, you know, would definitely love to, to listen to you can listen to it while you're working out. Like it seems like a, a really interesting resource. One thing I want to compliment you on something that you do well that I've watched you do. And then I'm like, okay, I got to learn to do like Andrew, because you are, you are a producer in, in like at heart, like you are able to see the many working parts and call together resources in order to kind of bring together this bigger vision. And I, I'm somebody who gets stuck in all the details, right? So like, I'll be the writer and the, you know, and the lighting person and the film person and the editor and the sound. And it's like, it's exhausting and you can't get it done. And, but you have always been somebody who's been really good at saying, I'm going to orchestrate people to pull off this project. I'm not going to carry this myself. And in that sense, I really admire kind of what you bring in that creative space. So tell me, how has that been as you're orchestrating this project? Because this is a huge project to pull off. And I think yeah. unless you had that mindset, it wouldn't have been able to be, be done. Yeah, well, I appreciate you saying that. That That's flattering. Although uh, the dirty little secret secret is that I'm ADD. <laughs> so it's not so much that that I just developed this amazing skill of, skill of delegating, but it's just that I'm, I'm handicapped. I'm incapable <laughs> of being able to do all the little details. So I'm forced to, um, uh, uh, you know, delegate and in and, 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 and that way. Um, but that being said, I mean, with, with this project, with Parable in the last year, oftentimes I do, I mean, when you're doing a startup, you're doing everything, man. You know, it's, 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 it's you, you, so I, as a producer, not only do I oversee projects, I also do a lot of directing. Um, I do a lot of writing still. Um, I even, uh, do, do some acting with the audio dramas and with the the docu series. I host most of them um, thus far, um, but yeah. So I still do a lot of the work. But what's been really great is, uh, man, God has been. It, it's is one of those things where the biggest thing I've learned is the important of the importance of networking and and it building those great relationships and never burn bridges, man. Um, uh, no matter what has happened the importance of like you know building those relationships it's 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 because you never know how how you could how you can you can you can partner with someone so for me I've been really blessed to be able to have a lot of strong partnerships and relationships and a lot of people involved where uh I have a rapport with them and we trust one another so it makes it all really fun you know I I know I can trust this person I can delegate this to this person because I know they're going to do it because I've known them for five years and we've done projects together, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, and I, I wouldn't be too hard on yourself because we've worked on a lot of projects together and um, I, I've seen you delegate a lot. Now you're very talented and you can do a lot of things. You can edit and produce and direct and write and host. So because you have all those skills, um, I feel like a lot of times you end up putting yourself in that position. Um, but I, I, I've also seen you delegate really well. So yeah, th- 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 that's kind of how it's been for me. But maybe just kind of a, a, a last kind of plug, you know, what would you say to creators who are venturing out to try something new like this? Like, what would you say to them as a word of encouragement, a word of caution? And also, you know, how can they that they find uh, your product? Uh, yeah, so um, I hate giving advice because I've given advice before and then like a year later, I'll like be like, mm, actually, I don't believe that anymore. But 
one of the things that's, that's kind of stayed consistent for me in my career, and it's just worked out for me, is that, dude, you got to be your biggest fan. You know, there, there's an element of like, you just have to be your biggest fan. And 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 you you have to be humble. You have to be humble. Humility is so important. But you also have to believe that God has a purpose for you. And if if you if if there's a vision you have that God put in your hat put in your head and you've sat with it for a while and you're certain that God has put this in my head, you need to do it. And maybe it won't work out, but this is a crazy thing because sometimes we think like, oh, it's God, if God put a vision in my head, that means I'm going to do this and it's going to be successful. But I've learned that's not exactly what it means. If God put a vision in your head, that simply means He wants you to do it, whether or not it's going to have the level of success that you believe it should is irrelevant but what it will do you learn a lot you're you're you as a result of doing what god tells you to do you gain a lot more opportunities i mean when i think about when i graduated college and in, in, in like uh, five six years ago with a theology degree had no background in film didn't never wrote a script never touched a camera none of that but i knew god was telling me that i need to be in the space so i spent I was making no money at the time. I spent over 50% of my monthly um, budget buying a camera, buying gear, which was reckless. You know, Dave Ramsey would not be happy about that. I was spending a lot of money on uh, on gear and stuff like that. And I taught myself. I spent stayed up all night teaching myself Final Cut Pro, teaching myself video editing, editing um, color correction, all that good jazz. And I just started making videos, started producing. And certain projects worked out, certain projects didn't. And I went on from that. And I started getting more and more opportunities and taking risks. And I, the crazy thing about us, Kendra, um, since we produce content and we put it out there for people to see, people see the successes, right? They see the projects that are cool. So a lot of people know about Advent Next and like, man, Kendra did such a great job of Advent Next. But I'm sure there's some projects you've done that's been complete flops that didn't work out that you're like, oh, but no one knows about that. And but it was if it wasn't for those projects, you wouldn't have had gained the wisdom, the information you needed to be more equipped to do admin next, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you know, I'm getting to a kind of cliche theme, but that's the biggest advice I would give to any creative man. Don't let anybody, doesn't matter what position they're in in the church or they're your parent or whatnot, like don't don't worry about what other people think. Um, just focus on what God has for you. And I'll go even step further. Me, I don't do social media at all. Now a lot of people, they like social media and it's very unpopular opinion. But if I, three years ago, I went off of social media. I don't do social media at all. And I guarantee you, if I was still on social media today, I wouldn't have start, quit my job and started Parable Media. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now because there's something about this, be constantly being on social media. It, it, it takes you a lot longer to have that self-confidence in yourself because you're constantly, you can't help. The whole idea with social media is seeing other people's lives and the yeah. highlights of their lives. And so it oftentimes can force you to not be able to feel the creative creativity that, that God has put in your heart. But, but yeah. so, so those are some, some few hot takes that I've learned and the way I lead my life. Um, but as far as parable media, man, yeah, we're really excited. We're launching our first um, show this weekend, March 5th, okay. or whenever this comes out, it's coming out March 5th. Um, it's called A Quarter Life Faith. So you can go to any of the podcast platforms, look up Quarter Life Faith, subscribe. The first two episodes are going to drop, drop, uh, drop. The first episode is Kevin and Lucilla, uh, uh international star, Pentatonics. The second episode is part one of Justin Koo and his journey. Um, very excited. And you can also go to parablemedia.com to sign up to actually, this is this is exciting. You can sign up to be part of the first beta group, right? Okay. So we're going to be releasing the app and, and we were looking for a big group of people to release it to, to get feedback for it. So if you go to parablemedia.com and sign up, put in your email address, you'll be part of the first group to be able to use the app for free um, and give your feedback. And so, uh, yeah, that's 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 how you can support. That's how you can um, check check us out, and we would love to hear your feedback. Um, even even on the first show we're releasing, leave a review. Tell us what you think. Any feedback? Um, and yeah, and thanks for having having me on, Kendra. Yeah, I, I'm going to sign up, uh, parablemedia.com. I'm going to sign up as soon as we get off this interview. So and that, it's spelled, yeah. by the way, it's spelled uh, B-E-L. So P-A-R-A-B-E-L. Not, it's, not, it's, it's, a, it's not the traditional spelling of parable. So 
okay. parablemedia.com. Yeah. This has been a pleasure. Like always, we ha you have to come back on again. I love our yeah. dialogues and our talks. And yeah. I'm so excited. I'm so proud of you. You are inspiration. Uh, and I, I'm going to pray that uh, God continues to take you further and farther than you ever dreamed. Thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks, Kendra. Thank I'm really glad to be here. And hopefully I can come on again sometime. Thanks so much for taking the time to listen in. If you'd like to be part of the beta group and be the first to access this premier screen-free entertainment, sign up at parablemedia.com. That's P-A-R-B-E-L media.com. If you're not already following us on Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram, be sure to do so at Advent Next. You can follow our guest today, Andrew Ashley, at Andrew E. Ashley, or you can follow me at Kendra Arsenault with an X. I just want to say a special thanks to those of you who have left reviews on Apple Podcasts or engaging in the comments through YouTube. I really love hearing from you, so please keep it up. Leave a review or send in a request for me to cover a topic you'd enjoy. See you next week.